Greetings fellow programmers, this is Pavel and this is part 2 of our C++ exercise where we are creating the low shoe magic square. So uh, in our previous exercise of the previous video, well, I c we created the uh, random numbers uh, picker and assigned uh, all those numbers uh, that were randomly picked into our 2D array. So um, at this point, when this uh, two functions run, we'll have uh, our 2D array populated with randomly uh, assigned numbers from 1 to 9, with one number, with each number uh, having only one copy. In other words, there will be only one of ones, one of twos, one of three, and so forth. So uh, at this point, we can now go and actually check if this is indeed a magic square if the uh, sum of each row or if uh, sum of each row is equal to the uh, to each other in other words if the sum of the first row equals to the second row and it equals to the third row as well as the columns if the rows the sum of the uh, row equal equals the sum of the each columns and also the values across uh, if you didn't watch the first video, basically the sum of this row, the first row, equals sum of this row and this row. It also equals the same uh, of the column 1, 2, and 3, and it equals the same sum across, which would be 15 for if you have these numbers uh, 1 through 9. So um, let's create another, another method uh, which will return a boolean, true or false. Is this a magic square or not? So I will do boolean is magic square and um, over here I will do boolean is magic square no parameters and how do you like I said the sums have to equal so the first thing I need to do is find out let's say the first uh, the sum of the first row so I'll create a integer temp sum that equals the uh, numbers uh, that are populated in the first row. So it's the numbers uh, 0, 0, numbers uh, 0 and 1, and numbers uh, 0 and 2. So we have this temp sum. So now we can check against that with all the other rows and the, all the columns as well. So we can go and we can loop through the, through the rows and the columns. And I'm going to do one at a time. I'm going to loop first through the rows. Then I'm going to loop through the columns. And then at the end, I'm going to do the ones across. So first the rows. So I'm going to do four integer i equals zero. Actually, we can do i equals one because this is already the uh, the first row, so we can start from the second one, in other words, uh, which would be the index of uh, one. Or the i is less than size, and i plus plus. And in it, we'll simply check. If the numbers, that's our array, with the i, and think about what's hap what's what's changing. We, we are doing the rows, so the the first number changes because we have the row number one, which would be index zero, which is this. It's, it's, see the numbers zero, zero, zero. So this one will be one, and the next one will be two. But the next uh, elements, since there are three of them, it always will be one, zero, one, one, and one, two. So I can simply do i zero plus numbers of uh, I and one plus numbers uh, uh, I and two. If this equals to the value of them sum, then uh, you know what? No, not equal. Let's do if it doesn't equal, then we can simply return. False. We don't even have to check anything else. We already know that uh, all those uh, 
values uh, are not gonna be correct because if the first row doesn't equal the second one we already know we don't have the magic square we can return false now we do the same with the columns so integer but we don't we, we need to start from the first column which is integer i equals zero not one because we, we don't have the sum of the first row i mean we have the sum of the first row but we don't have the sum of the first column which is uh, supposed to equal to the sum of the first row and so we will do i is less than size and i plus plus and in it we'll do a similar check i'll just gonna copy it but now we're doing the columns so now the columns will be kind of fixed we'll start column one which would be index zero then we'll start column two which would be index one and then column two i mean three which would be index two so zero one two and the changing factor will be i we are changing the uh column this way this because before we did the rows now we're doing the columns so the so it will be zero zero one zero two zero all right so that's the first number of the of the column uh, so you go down i basically represent the represents the uh why would i put it this uh if you look at it zero zero this is element zero zero this is element one zero which would be this one and this is element two zero which would be this one then you go to the next uh, uh row and this would be element uh, uh zero one this would be element zero two and zero three because you still go by rows and so this is the row one or element zero this is ele uh, element one and this is element two or index so that's why we are changing it the in the reverse from the rows because all right so uh, that's our rows that's our columns and now we can uh, so I'll, I'll just cop uh, let me just do compare rows and I can they start from row one because them sum already holds the sum for row zero and over here we will do the uh, compare columns so we have rows we have columns let's do the uh, diagonal diagonal all right so the the ones across so that's gonna be this this and this and then also this this and this so i'm gonna do them separately i'm gonna compare uh cross values left to right uh so it's gonna be again i'm gonna copy the whole thing we don't need any for loop this is just that it's only one of them available well, from left to right and one available right to left so i'll just do if statement so now what elements am i looking for i'm looking for zero zero one one and two two so if uh, the element zero zero one one and two two are not equal to the temp sum then again we have a we have a wrong square we don't have the magic square and now i will compare cross values uh right to left and it's the same thing except in reverse order so now now i need uh, the value this is row zero element two this is row, row one element one and this is row three element zero so it's gonna be uh zero two that's our first number one one stays the same because that's the middle and two and zero like that you simply have to look into the into the grid and uh, kind of realize the coordinates of each of these numbers and that's what these indexes are 
So if none of this uh, falls through, in other words, if the false is not uh, returned, then we will return true because now if neither of these conditions uh, happened, then we actually have a magic square. So we will simply return true. All right, so um, I'm gonna create a. Uh, let me create one more function, and I'll call it void uh, populate grid, because if you have the winning square, I mean the uh, magic square, we can populate the grid. We can show the numbers the way they are being uh, uh, in our. On our grid to create the magic square which would be in this order 4923578168 so if that's the order that they happen to be randomly selected we have a magic square so displayed kind of like a proof so i'm gonna create a void populate uh, grid and it's gonna be very similar in fact i'm gonna take it from our, uh, when we were adding the number to array, I'll just copy paste it, because it's gonna be the same for uh, for loops, uh, except I'm not gonna be, uh, I'm not gonna be checking anything, I'm simply gonna be outputting on the screen the value itself that is in the array of numbers. So the numbers, I will see out the numbers, I and uh, C, and I will space them out, so it's gonna be uh, like over here. I have, have no spaces. Actually, I have the spaces, so it's, it does the number or writes the number, then writes the space, then writes the number, writes the space, writes the number, and then it has to come over here to the next next row. So this one, this one puts those numbers uh, in one row. Uh, this inner loop. So after that is finished, I will move to the next. Uh, to the next line or to the next row. So I will simply I'll put an empty and move to the next uh, three numbers and then one more. And uh, that's gonna be our last row. So these are our functions. So in the next video, I'm gonna put it all together uh, into our main method to kind of run the program and uh, plug those functions in and see if they work correctly. So stick around and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.